Welcome to the Lunch Hour with Mr. Credit. It's the big guy. Get in here. And today, it's Wise Wednesday. You're so wise, but like a miniature Buddha covered in hair. Giving you the smartest financial advice in every aspect of your financial life. You're so money and you don't even know it. And now, the Lunch Hour with Mr. Credit on ESPN Radio 1700. Time at your lunch hour. It's JJ in the hot seat on this wise Wednesday. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to uh, make yourself a little bit smarter than everyone else. That's what we're here to do. And we have the right guest today to make this happen for you. And um, I'll start right to left on the real estate side our premier agent in the studio today, Shauna Scott with Scott Properties. How are you doing today, Shauna? I'm doing very well. Thanks, JJ. Thank you. Thanks for taking the time out of your busy week. I know um, and we come out of the weekend sometimes. Monday's a hot day. Just kind of wrap everything up, get things going for the week. And then Wednesday, for a lot of people, it's, you know, it's hump day and things slow down. But in the real estate world, things don't slow down, especially when you're a busy realtor like yourself. So do appreciate the time out of the middle of the day. And on the mortgage side, to bring you some good information today, Sean Cahan from RPM Mortgage. How you doing, Sean? I'm doing excellent. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for taking time out of your day um, and uh, joining us here today. So a uh, quick market update. Um, you know, it's interesting. Uh, the feds came out, did some speaking yesterday. And you never know what's going to happen. Um, but uh, our new Fed chairman, Janet Yellen, she's, uh, you know, some people say, hey, you know, doing a good job. I mean, kind of just keep it on the same focus as uh, our last chairman. And, um, you know, bond buying going down hasn't really adversely affected interest rates. Um, but the market today got green kind of all around. Um, little sell off in the bond markets, but not too much. So not a big deal right there. And um, but let's 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 talk about um, what the comments were on the economy ye yesterday, just just for a minute. And we don't need to spend too much time. But, you know, it's just interesting. I mean, Yellen is, uh, you know, job markets improving um, and we've seen those job numbers come out month over month. You know, um, for the for the first quarter, it was kind of like blaming everything on the weather. Right. The economy was stagnant just because of the big freeze. And uh, people weren't buying because they couldn't leave their house. I mean, shoot, I'd just go online and buy stuff um, if that were the case, right? I do it, and I'm in sunny Southern California here. So I don't think that's something that anybody ever has to worry about. Maybe they couldn't get their packages in an overnight fashion from Amazon since they can't fly their drones yet. But um, so markets, job markets improving, but not strong enough to satisfy the chair woman, I should say, Janet Yellen, um, wages are rising too slowly. And I think that's that's a really good topic, especially as we see all over the country, minimum wage talk, um, trying to get that pushed up. And in some some places like Seattle, you know, they've passed um, you know, a huge increase up there and you're starting to see it around. Um, but I don't think that's really the job market we're talking about. I just think wages in general um, are, have just been stagnant and they're not keeping up with the price of goods. Um, and that's it's always amazing when inflation numbers come out and inflation hasn't you know increased at all. And I mean, I know personally speaking, my dollar does not go as far in the grocery store as it once did even a couple of years ago. I mean, I, I was out of town uh, working from the East Coast for a couple of weeks, came back, did a kind of a rebuy for the for the family and uh, spent 300 bucks and you know, could have easily spent more to fill um, the gaps that were in our refrigerator and cupboard. So um, it's it's interesting. But the, the Federal Reserve has been trying to stimulate the economy since 2008, keeping short term rates low. And um, Sean, you know, you might be able to chime in here. I mean, you know, it's interesting because I talk to people I mean, we're in the, we're in the same space as far as the mortgage business. And you know, people hear the Feds come out and talk about raising interest rates. You know, when are rate? You know, when are they going to start raising interest rates? And maybe you can chime in. I mean, when they're talking about raising interest rates, at least on the Fed side, what, what interest rate are they talking about raising? Let's clear this up for people. They are actually doing the um, 
short-term interest rates and which is the like the reserve requirements i believe yep. that they're talking prime about rate. um and so if they go with prime rate um which will increase which will then increase the customers and the deposits the bank loans the adjustable rate mortgages and also uh it will affect the libor as well at yeah. that time yeah yeah so that's, that's something to think about i mean i i know people get hung up especially when we're talking about real estate sean and i'm i'm sure you know, you hear this on the street, just talking to people that are looking to buy, um, you know, interest rates are always on people's minds, mm -hmm. you know, and we came out of such a lows of lows last year. And <coughs> yes, about a year ago, a couple weeks ago, right before July 4th, um, you know, we had uh, a nice increase in the long term mortgage rates and, mm -hmm. and we lost about a percent pretty fast. Um, goes from the threes into the fours, but we're still incredibly low and if anything they've come back down a little bit this year I mean, we've hit lows of lows for the year a couple different times and we're still talking about low four percent um, on different programs FHA mm -hmm. VA you're in the threes still which is crazy to me um, jumbo stuff you're in the low four sometimes even better than conventional money so don't get caught up in the sense when the feds are talking about raising interest rates but if you do have that line of equity on your home a HELOC. Some people don't really understand the difference. Line of equity, HELOC, they're the same. That's tied to short-term rates. That's what the feds are talking about. So, you know, if they start increasing that, right now prime rate's three and a quarter percent. It's not going to go any lower, can't go any lower. And you have a margin that's tied to that loan. And so it's prime rate plus that margin. And your credit cards are tied to the prime rate. Your auto loans are tied to the prime rate. Um, now, as Sean alluded to, you know, your deposits. I mean, if you have some um, you know, uh, savings accounts. I mean, as prime rate goes up, you might feel the gain from that, um, but, you know, pretty minimally. So you might make a little bit more interest on your money. But if you do have that HELOC on your current home and you're thinking about selling your home, I mean, this is all, it all ties together here because if you can't refinance it, maybe you've tried or you can't and you need to sell it, Think of that payment. And a lot of people took out lines of equity in 2005, 2006. So, I mean, we're going to start to see in 2004, we, people have already started to see those adjustments happening. The banks are already talking about the adjustments on the lines of equity, how it can adversely affect families. Um, and it can be it can be a, a big deal. So watch out for that. Because what's going to happen is your line of equity is, t is a, a 10 year sort of draw period or interest only payment period. Then it's going to go into a fixed payment on a 20 year principal and interest payment on an adjustable rate. And it's not going to stop adjusting. Once it goes in that fixed rate, it's not going to stop adjusting. It's going to continue to adjust as prime rate adjusts. So be careful of that. Um, and as far as mortgage rates, I mean, as prime rate, as interest rates go up, I think that means the economy is gaining steam. That means we're probably going to see some sell off and some pressure on the bond markets and the mortgage bond markets. And you probably will see more long term rates kind of follow suit. Um, now, Shauna, have you talked to people? I mean, just that are in homes and has the, the talk of the line of equity or that HELOC that they currently have on their home come up at all as far as an adjustment? Yeah, there it is definitely something where they are starting to kind of even out because there for a while you didn't have the equity in your home. So they may have the line of credit that was on the equity at one point, but now they are starting to get a little bit hopeful that they will be able to get into the black so that then they can get into a move move up situation. Yeah. yeah. But then the idea of interest rates possibly going up. So then it's a balancing act between those to see where you really are and what you can do and the move up that you really could possibly do. And the loans that you could get when you got that second, can you now get that same type of loan? A lot of times, no, because a lot of them were doing some type of stated income or something like that. Um, so there, there is then having to go out and search to see if you can, under your current situation, be able to pay off or have it be where the, there are some, that, some equity lines that will go ahead and um, uh, maybe modify it or, or, or just redo it. Yes. Yeah, rewrite redo, it. And, right. I think, and I think that's something to, to think about. If you are in one of those situations, I mean, 
You know, the banks are talking to the feds and they're 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 they, they have discussions on this right now because they don't want the fallout from the housing market to happen because of the seconds being adjusted. So there I know some of the banks are, are in talks of trying to put something in play or maybe even reaching out to those 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 clients that could be in that position ahead of time mm -hmm. to sort of stop the pain. But be careful because they may modify your loan and here you are once again now you're in a modification which could halt something down the road as far as moving up. Now, something else that Yellen sort of um, described in, in the comments yesterday was the recent slowdown in the housing market as disappointing. Um, Shauna, is this something that you're seeing here locally in San Diego? I mean, and, and the word disappointing, I mean, what does that really mean? <laughs> right. I, I couldn't really grasp it, but I mean, are we seeing that here? You know, I don't think we're seeing it here. It, yes, from, this year versus last year, things have definitely kind of uh, slowed down. You are seeing more on the market. You are seeing more inventory. People are having to do some price reductions before their property is selling. It's not selling just in seven days in all cases like it used to. But it's still a great market. It's not what it was. You know, we're, last year, we're, we were looking back at then the year before, which was a lot of foreclosures and a lot of investors in there and doing flips. Last year was that adjustment. Now we're coming into, I think, more of a stabilization. Yeah, oh, I, I tend to agree. And Sean, I mean, would you would you follow suit with that same same sort of thinking? Yes, 100%. Um, I, be, I was noticing the exact same thing in 2012. It's a bunch of, you know, all cash, short sale, foreclosures, remodeling the property and getting people stabilized. Um, so individuals really don't want to sell typically when they have a three and a half percent right now to then, you know, get some equity out of their home to go purchase a home that's more expensive, but in a higher interest rate. So yeah, it, it is tough. Because, kind of mm -hmm. one yeah. of those markets last year went up so much and the interest rates were so low that is it really, you know, available to sell. But it is opening up more and more refinances coming out of that FHA um, or mortgage insurance product. So I think that a lot of the media is not touching on the advantages of the actual refinance that are coming out from what happened last year in the in the increase in, in property value. Yeah, I'm sure FHA is feeling the pain in their books as these FHA loans get paid off um, to get out of that mortgage insurance that they implemented that will be there for the life of the loan. Um, and we'll talk about mortgage insurance a little bit down the road in our conversation today. So this is just kind of interesting. We talk about you know, the Fed's kind of talking and maybe the economy not being up to par. This story caught my eye only because I wonder if this is part of the problem. I mean, here you have Warren Buffett. He bought a new caddy, new Cadillac. Um, his, his, he traded in his 2006 for 2014. Now, here's a gentleman that can buy any car he wants. You know, I saw in, in, in uh, out my office window the other day a, a $2 million Bugatti drive by. Um, and if Warren wanted that car, a snap of a finger and it would show up in his driveway probably. Not a problem, right? Um, but he's taken eight years to buy a new car. Now, I get it. You're frugal and some people will say, hey, you know what? That's how he got there, right? Pinching the pennies. But is this part of the problem? I mean, the ultra wealthy hanging on to their money and not putting it into the economy. I just wonder, I mean, Shauna, am I off my rocker here by this thinking? Should I not worry about this and not care? <laughs> or, or do you think this is, I mean, something to think about? Well, it's definitely, I think, something to think about. But I have to say, for me personally, I love that he's still driving an old car. I don't care if he's ultra rich or whatever. I think that's beautiful. It is It is a cool thing. And <laughs> yeah. I, I give him kudos for that. And maybe he's got a slew, you know, maybe this was the one that made it to the press and he's got right. a, a 25, you know, car garage somewhere. But I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> Not this guy. Sean, what do you think? Well, do we need to worry about this? No, I do not believe that we need no. to worry about this. No, because there's everyone knows that Warren Buffett is frugal with his money, still living in the same house that he purchased 20 plus years ago. And uh, but I have personally seen on the other side, you know, the middle class to upper middle class have been coming out to spend a lot more. Yeah. Um, and so I'm we're not I don't think we're really seeing this on, you know, in, in San Diego world. or <laughs> in Southern California. Um, but uh, maybe in other parts that we just don't know about, yeah. but not locally here. Yeah. I don't see that. Well, I'm going to disagree with both of you. I think, Warren, <laughs> go buy, spend some money, man. I mean, take, <laughs> take, take, take a billion dollars and go pump it into the economy so people can 
then buy stuff and spend their money. You know, I mean, that's that's just part of it. we got to keep the rich keeping it all going here. And I get it. Um, when we come back, we're going to dive into your local real estate market right here in San Diego. Interesting article in the UT this morning we're going to get into as well. We're going to just dive right into it. Shauna Scott, Scott Properties, Sean Cahan with RPM Mortgage, JJ in the house today. Thank you for joining us. We'll be right back with your Lunch Hour 1700 ESPN. Welcome back. It's your Lunch Hour with Mr. Credit. It is JJ in the hot seat today, Synergy One Lending, and we have your expert panel, Shauna Scott with Scott Properties. You can find Shauna at scottproperties.net. And one thing that um, you know I like about your website, Sean, is that you know it seems like you can just really kind of search the MLS for listings um, yes. without you know kind of divulging your life story to enable to do that. Um, that is something that uh, my husband, who's my broker, and uh, we really wanted to have a website where people could go in and not have to after a few searches then you know give out your information, which for us personally doesn't then give us you know a client to then possibly go after but we wanted to be those people that really just tried to help people in real estate if they were serious about looking hopefully they'll think about us once they are truly serious but yeah and that's that's no cool. obligation yeah that is very cool because i know you know the technology kind of you know to, to to put this information out to the masses however many years ago when it when it kind of was was available it, you know, I know that, you know, even the web hosting people are like, OK, well, you know, do you want the, the phone number up front? Do you want the name up front? And then they, you know, kind of divulge. You give them a little bit and then they got to divulge a little bit more Then you give right. them a little bit. And and it's just pretty neat that you um, uh, you do that. So Scott Properties, exactly as it sounds, dot net is where you can go to uh, to see Shauna and her husband. They're the spouses that sell houses which I love that that little deal. Um, let's let's talk about San Diego for a second because, you know, I know that um, I'm a UT receiver. I, I still have it delivered to my house. Twenty mm -hmm. plus years being in San Diego, and and obviously we can find it online. But it's great to pick up the paper. And um, this morning, interesting article. Um, kind of sounds doom and gloom ish a little bit. Um, and the title is San Diego housing market losing steam. This kind of follows Janet Yellen's comments that the housing market has been disappointing to her, um, but it kind of starts off, and and I'm just you know, I'm, they're they're looking at the first quarter. I mean, you know, right. the, the they're looking at the first quarter data: low inventory, higher prices, and rising interest rates sucked the air out of the San Diego County housing market in the first half. Um, so they're looking at the first half. Excuse me. Uh, I tend to disagree with this. Um, and you know if it's just data points that's fine but um interest rates have actually i mean after the first quarter interest rates and sean you can probably you know follow suit with this but interest rates kind of came back in a little bit after the first quarter mm -hmm. um you know the inventory levels have only gone up after the first quarter right sean i mean i right. think march we are in the 3000 3500 range yeah and then you know we've kind of trekked higher we jumped over four or five and now we're over eight thousand homes for sale so definitely not an inventory issue at this point in time, um, but I mean, how do you feel about this? The data that's you know, I mean, if somebody's reading this and going, Phew, "Okay, it's not the right time to buy now," I mean, how do you combat that? Well, I I think if you really read it, it does talk about that, but it, it also sounds like it's really a great time to buy because even though interest rates are going up, they're still historically so low. So yes, from your, you know, bottom level, it, it it has gone up. But my gosh, you know, remember the days when they were, you know, eight percent and that was good. You <laughs> People know People forget those days, Shauna. <laughs> yeah, <I> <laughs> People have forgotten I, I the days. Know. But and yes. so it's just it's amazing. I mean we're still in great interest rates and um, you know the inventory is going up. But yet if you price the property correctly then that house is selling because there's still a lot of people out there that want to either move up or just get into the market. There's a lot of first time home buyers out there. Yeah, and, and I and I agree with you. I mean, it, being in the lending field, I mean, I still have a good solid drawer full of people that are pre-approved. And Sean, I'm sure you're in the same boat here. Yes, for sure. Um, you know, and 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 they're putting offers in, and they're still getting outbid. They're not getting the property that they want. And it could just be one of those things that, you know, here we have all this inventory 
and or at least more inventory. Um, but it, do you think it's, I mean, are sellers being unrealistic with the price points that they're putting them out there? Because I, I mean, I go to the, the different pit sessions around town and, you know, the, the price reduction category, um, it seems like all year has been a strong mm-hmm. category to sort of announce the price reductions. And we're still seeing that. Yeah. And I think that really comes down to, you know, that that is about educating your seller up front. Okay, and so if you know the market and you know what's going on, if they want the best thing you can do when you put a property on the market is to price it correctly from the beginning. And that means knowing the market at that point in time. If you want to go fishing and go out there and do that, a lot of times you are going to end up with a little bit lower price because you are going to have to do that price reduction. And so if you don't have a realtor who's going to educate you up front and really, you know, try to get you to do that, then you can go and price it higher because everyone does want to get that higher price and everyone thinks that they're living in that the perfect house. the perfect house, <laughs> the best one on the block and it should be the highest. And so if they do that, then they just have to understand that they may be taking a chance and they may have to then go ahead and reduce it. And it's great to go fishing sometimes because sometimes it does work out. You know, it's not it's not a perfect science. Yeah. And and last year was probably the perfect fishing time. You drop the line in and um, you would get a nibble in day one, most likely, no matter what your house was priced at. And, you know, the markets change. And, you know, it, what's interesting about this article, too, I mean, we're still seeing I mean, the, the amount of equity position that, that gained from 2012 to 2013 was crazy. Um, but we've still seen a very good increase in equity position from 2013 to 2014. And when they say the market has slowed down, I mean, let me make this very clear. From January through the end of June, the number of transactions in San Diego County, they're only down by 2,300 sales. I mean, we're talking less than 400 sales a month. That's not a lot. Um, so if you are looking, you're thinking about it, I mean, don't wait. I mean, people are reducing their prices. Find the right home. There's a lot of inventory out there. Don't get discouraged. And if you were discouraged last year, if you kind of fell out of it last year, take the time to kind of revisit it. Make sure you get pre-approved again um, to make sure you can still buy because regulations have changed. Um, But get back in it because you're going to be surprised. I mean, what you're going to see out in the market. And Shauna, I mean, we talk about in the market kind of, you know, sales slowing down. I know you're you're definitely a, an expert expert in some of the beachy communities, Pacific Beach, um, Ocean Beach, Point Loma, Bay Park. Um, and being close to the water is always a good thing. Um, right. Do we see the same sort of slowdown or price reductions in those areas as well? Definitely seeing more on the market. OK. And, and again, I think it comes from people wanting to get the most they can, a seller wanting to get the most they can out of the property. But um, there's not the same uh, amount of property. I wouldn't say that that things are still moving very quickly, yeah. uh, you know, if along the coast. And um, there's a lot of opportunities there. Yeah, that's great. And, and, and that's the thing. I mean, you know, if you're looking for opportunity, it's out there. That's that's the key point here. Yes. Now, I mean, who are you seeing? I mean, do you still see a lot of investors kind of jumping in this marketplace or are they more people that are going to occupy the home? I see more owner occupants than definitely than a year ago, but there's still the investors out there. And actually, I've seen more investors coming coastal, I think, because they see more of the opportunity mm-hmm. there. Yeah. Okay. Get get next to the blue thing. Exactly. <laughs> yes. So so, but there's still. I mean, everybody wants. You know, if you can afford to live at the coast and be able to have that view, then those people are willing to and want to have an owner occupied property. Yeah, definitely. When we come back, I, I want to talk about the investor game because I know there's investors out there that that have been kind of put back on the sideline and they think they might be out of it. And I want to talk about the investors, and we want to talk about mortgages and some some regulatory changes and time frames. If you've had a credit issue, it's your lunch hour, 1700 ESPN, Mr. Credit. Welcome back. It's your lunch hour. JJ here, Synergy One Lending. Have a great panel in the studio. Before the break, we were talking about your local San Diego real estate with Shauna Scott, scottproperties.net. And if you are looking or you want to search for a home yourself, kind of before you talk to somebody, 
Um, great website to do this because you don't have to put any any information in there. Um, scottproperties.net. There's two T's in Scott. A lot of these websites, they'll make you kind of enter something, then you're going to get pounded on the phone by somebody trying to sell their services. Now, I would recommend that you use the Scots at the end of the day. It's one of the reasons why we bring in these experts into the studio is because they are experts in their field. We also have Sean Cahan with RPM Mortgage, our mortgage specialist for the day here. So I want to just go back to what we were talking about. We were talking about investors in, in the real estate market. Um, you know, are is there still a place for the investor out there? I think that's the biggest question that I have. What do you think, Shauna? I think so. Yeah. I, I definitely think there is. I mean, you have to search a lot harder, but I think there definitely is. Yeah. Sean, I mean, are you seeing the investors still, you know, picking up properties and, and not, not so much to, to fix and flip, but just to try to cash flow and kind of build their real estate portfolio? I see a lot of investors still trying to maximize their 10 properties, you know, that Fannie Mae does allow. Instead of coming in with the all cash, I'm actually seeing more investors now getting the 50% or 60%, which you can go up to 75% loan to value, um, just to try to create the larger return because the prices have increased a little bit. And let's mm -hmm. touch base back. I mean, you mentioned up to 10 properties. You know, I know a lot of a lot of places out there have limitations, right? You go to the big banks, and I don't care which one of them. You go to the big banks; they're going to tell you, "We can't, we can't finance more than four. You have four finance properties, can't help you out." So, what do you mean by you can go to to ten? If you sell, so RPM Mortgage is a direct bank, um, and so we allow up to 10 financed properties. There are guidelines against that. It's more for a purchase transaction or rate and term refinance instead of you can't really go above four. Once you have five financed properties, you can't you know cash out um, and you cannot consolidate a first and a second because that would be considered cash out as well. But you can maximize up to 10 financed properties. And that's that's huge. That's that's good for people to know. So I mean, if you're out there, you're looking for properties, and and I still see the investors, you know, buying to to rent. Um, you know, I mean, equity is still going up, values are still going up. So maybe it's a long term hold, maybe it's a shorter term hold, um, but but the opportunity is definitely out there. And remember, you do get a tax advantage as well for for the property. Um, so since we're kind of on that mortgage topic, Sean. Um, you know, credit challenges. I mean, we've been through a lot of different regulatory changes this year in January, especially with ATR and QM and um, just trying to, you know, figure out these newer guidelines that, you know, not not only the, the you know, Fannie Mae's and the Freddie Macs have put out, but the regulators have kind of thrown on top of everything and put pressure on them. You know, I think everybody thought that lending would get easier in 2014 and just kind of loosen up. I can't I can't tell you how many times I, I heard last year, oh, it's just got, I mean, next year, it's just, it's just gonna get easier. And, you know, January was like, well, okay, here, you know, here's some limitations for you, which is fine, I think it's good. I think it's good for the market. I don't think it's having any ill effect on the marketplace. Um, but let's kind of talk about it. Let's say you've had a credit challenge in the past. Um, and I'll just, we'll just kind of go down the list here. I mean, I just kind of want to lean on you a little bit to kind of give us you know what it requires, what the time frames are, because I think that's the key. Mm -hmm. How long do I have to wait after this happened? I did this. I'm better now. I want to buy. How long do I have to wait? So let's start with bankruptcy. Bankruptcy is actually broken into three different categories. Let's go conventional FHA and VA because they all underwrite a little bit differently. Uh, for VA, it's most likely always stick to the two year. There's always ways to get it down to one year if you know, special circumstance, but always just try to stick to two years. Um, FHA is also two years, and that's for a bankruptcy, and that's for a 7 and a 13. Uh, now, when you get into the conventional product, um, it's four years for a Chapter 7. So a lot of people think, have heard from the, you know, market, or they kind of mix the two, an FHA and conventional together, but it really is a four-year wait period on a Chapter 7. Now, if you have a Chapter 13 on a conventional, that's when it goes off of your discharge date. It's a two-year wait period onto that. Okay, good. That's that's great information. And, you know, I think, you know, from a VA perspective, it's probably the most lenient when it comes to the waiting time frames. And luckily, we're in San Diego County here. And, and um, you know, it's, it's nice because we... Uh, 
you know, service those those vets that have serviced us. And, and the loan program definitely is the most lenient when it comes to a lot of these things from a waiting period. So let's talk about, I'm going to skip short sale for just a second. And let's talk about foreclosure. Let's say you walked away. You did, you, you, we hate using the F word. I don't like using it. I mean, you should never have to do a foreclosure. Um, but let's say you just didn't, you didn't have the right advice and, and, and it happened. What, what are you, what are you looking at on a foreclosure? Foreclosure, um, you're looking at three years for FHA. Um, and then it's also always seven years for the conventional product. Um, and then for a VA, it's two years um for the actual foreclosure on that one okay, so, so once again va mm -hmm. i mean if you are a vet out there you you had a sort of a credit challenge and it happens it's okay um especially in other states you know va the the vets move around a lot and um you know you may have owned a home in another state you got sent overseas you're back and and you just couldn't hang on to that property um we don't see the deed in lose of foreclosure as much here in california as we do in other states but how about the deed in lieu? The deed in lieu um, with RPM, we actually follow the short or the foreclosure guidelines, so it's going to be the exact same. The deed in lieu and the foreclosure are going to have the same wait period. And and it really is the same thing. I mean, instead of walking away and not making payments, you're saying here, take the keys and take the property back, which I think is admirable if you if you have to do it that way. Um, you know, some people like to stay in the house for a long time, not make a payment and then walk away, which is fine. So now we get to the big one here. And this is the one that we've all been waiting for. If I knew where the drum roll button, <laughs> what, you know what? I, I do know where it is. It's the, let's talk about short sales. Uh oh. And how do I stop the drum roll? There we go. That's why I don't push the buttons. <laughs> <laughs> I can start them sometimes, but I can't stop them. <laughs> so right now, let's talk about right now, today, July 16th. You had a short sale. What's the waiting period? Well, again, it kind of breaks down into the three different categories. We have conventional, we have FHA and also VA. So VA um, and FHA look at short sale to be the same as a foreclosure in most cases. Um, again, there's always a little bit of a gray area in all types of financing. So um, the FHA does allow this one called the back to work program, which only allows a one year wait period for a uh, short sale. But it, you have to meet certain criteria with your credit with also, you know, the why your income income was decreased and then also increased to meet the criteria, but it is available. Yeah, and um, it, and it's a tough one. I mean, you know, it's it's a uh, I know some some people have been down that road, try to kind of take advantage of that program because it is nice that they offer it. I think it was something that FHA kind of threw out there to say, hey, you know, we're we're over here. We increased our mortgage insurance, but you know what? We're going to lower the the wait period to a year if you if you comply with this stuff. It's very difficult to comply with everything that they want to see. Um, I've I've spoken directly to HUD on this on on some different things, and you know, you think you have a perfect scenario in place where everything falls in place, and they're like, ah, nah, it doesn't really fit the guidelines. Okay, well, why did why did you bring the program out? Um, and and just you know, I'll touch uh, touch base on VA. You know, from a v specific VA guideline. I mean, VA really doesn't have a true waiting period above and beyond these things. So you know, depending on the scenario, if you had a short sale, I mean, it's potential that you could um, use your VA financing um, before that two year mark, because um, again, they are the most lenient. But you got to have a good story. Um, now. Let's get into the, the nuts. You know what? I'm going to wait because we have some changes coming in a month, a month from today. And if you had a short sale, you need to hear this because you may need to call Shauna today to get an escrow very soon <laughs> Tomorrow, with the changes that are happening in a month from now. When we come back, we're going to talk about this a short sale if it's on your record. It's your lunch hour, 1700. ESPN. Welcome back. It is your lunch hour, and thank you for taking the time to join us here today. It's JJ with Synergy One Lending. Have a great panel in the studio. Shauna Scott, scottproperties.net, for all your real estate searches without putting in your information. I 
urge you to go check out scottproperties.net and Sean Cahan with the RPM Mortgage. Before the break, we were just talking about it. if you had a short sale, if you know somebody that had a short sale or went through that, um, where you're, you're, maybe you're close to that two-year mark that you've been waiting for. What is going to happen a month from now? So August 16th, and and we have we did some digging before the show started because Fannie Mae released something in June that said, hey, we're make, August 16th, we're making a change. Here are the changes. And it's a little convoluted when you read it because it doesn't really specify short sale. But Sean kind of reached out. We got the information directly from Fannie Mae that they are using language interchangeably. So August 16th, Sean, somebody had a short sale, you want to buy a house, conventional financing, what's going to happen? Well, 20% uh, down, you're going from two years to four years. Two years to four your, years. For your wait period. So that is not good. No! <laughs> and I know a lot of people that have been waiting for this time. I know a lot of people that have been waiting for this time. Mm -hmm. If you're in this situation, and you're 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 past the two year mark right now, and and you've kind of been on hold. You've been putting offers, and I urge you to get your offers get going because you're gonna have to do a 21 day escrow. You may even work with a a lender that, you know, m m if it gets close to that date, they may not fund that loan. It's possible um, because they want to have that loan sold to Fannie Mae before August 16th. So make sure um, you're working with the right the right person on that. Um, Shauna, I mean, I, I I know you have people in this boat. I do. Yeah. I do. And it's just, it's it's heartbreaking that, you know, they've been waiting this time, getting their 20% down. And, uh, you know, they're, I actually have a client who is not going to, for the two years to be up, isn't going to make it by August. So it was going to be a couple more months. So now they're going to have to wait another two years unless they find some other alternative financing yeah and there and there is alternative financing out there right. with bigger down payments you're not going to get your standard 30-year fixed loans but there there are all there are alternatives out there I, and I'm gonna broach this subject just for a minute I'm not a credit repair expert I don't do credit repair but I do get told that you know well I talk to somebody they can what they can they can remove the the short sale off my credit they can just get rid of it and take it away it's it's not gonna be there it's gonna cost me a couple grand and, and then I'm good, right? Um, well, I'm going to tell you, I, I got a call last week from a very distressed buyer who was told, um, you know what? Hey, we can do your deal. And we started talking. And he basically, it, it kind of came out that the whole story wasn't told up front to the other lender. The short sale that he had wasn't on his credit report anymore. It had been removed. But, so the loan got approved. And the loan went in for the final clear to close, the final underwriting approval. And lo and behold, you know, the banks and the underwriters run these, these cool reports that will pick up this information. They'll pick up the fact that you owned a house a year ago, and they'll look up the house. And you know what? You can see pretty clear in day that you did a short sale. And just because it's not on your credit report does not mean that you are in the clear so I just want to kind of bring that out because I know that that information gets gets put out there. Now, Shauna, you know, we're in the heat of the summer. We're in the middle of the summer. I meant, well, maybe a month in, in the middle of July. If I'm getting ready to sell my house today, I'm think, I, I need to get my house on the market. Can you give me like top three things I can do right today before I even hire a real estate agent, before I even interview? Is there anything that I can do right now to help me sell my home more efficiently? Well, there are a few things you can do. I mean, first of all, you have to mentally be prepared to leave the house. I mean, that's that's the biggest thing because there, you have to get that separation from the house because a lot of people are, they you bought the house for a reason. So you need to go ahead and be prepared. Another thing is if you have those honeydews around the house that are half done, get them done. The and, half honey dudes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And then another thing is look at the front of your house as if you've never looked at it before. What kind of curb appeal? Because that's 
that's just real estate 101. You want to have that curb appeal. So it's something simple, easy that you can do up front because you know your realtor is probably going to talk about it anyway. Yeah, I like that. Now, so I do those three things. I call you. We meet. We're going to list the house. Now what do I need to do? Are there, is there anything else beyond that? I mean, I'm prepared. I know I want to move. I've done my little list. I mean, maybe you've given me more jobs to do right. because, you know, I think my house is perfect mm -hmm. and it's worth 100000 more than your, you know, than, than what it's really worth because it has crown molding. I get that. <laughs> so what else? What else after? You know, I list it. Now what? Well, then you have to have your house ready to to be shown every day. And sometimes that can be very stressful for people. So a little tip that I, I give to sellers is either a big garbage bag or a tub that you get from Target, the stuff that you just don't have time to put away because you're busy getting everybody off for the day, stuff it all in there, put it in the garage, deal with it when you come home. I like that. And you'll so, probably find that you'll throw the tub away down the road. Right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Now, what do you do if you have kids? I have a four and a five year old at home. Yeah. I mean, what what do I do with? I mean, they have toys. You know, in, a, right. in an hour, every toy in the yeah. world can be taken out. I mean, how do you handle that? So again, that is where they have to be able to play because you can't send them to grandma's for you know a month while you sell your house. So they again, when you leave the house, you take a quick look around. You put it in that tub. You have a tub that's just for that, and then you just. That way you don't have to stress about it. If you're not a neat freak and able to just put everything away, like my husband, our house is clean before he leaves the house every single day. There's not a thing out just because that's the way he is. But if you're not that person, you have to have a stress, stressful, stress-free way to go ahead and take care of it later and still have it presentable. Yeah, that's, that's great advice. That's Shauna Scott with scottproperties.net. Um, if you're thinking about buying, selling, I urge you to uh, reach out to uh, Shauna. That's why we bring the experts in the studio today. Now, Shauna, we're short, we're short on time, but somebody's getting ready to buy a home. They call you. Top three things they need to do for you as a lender to get them prepared to purchase a home. Top three things, I would say just have your income documentation ready and your assets ready. And let's talk about that. Income documentation, what, what does that entail? Uh, I always ask for two pay stubs, two years W-2s if you're W-2, and one year tax return, um, just for simplicity reasons, just to get the ball going. Um, or if you're self-employed, two years tax returns, um, and pretty much that's it for your self-employment. Um, there are the one-year requirement for Freddie Mac, and you know there's special programs up there. But I would always just have like the basics ready. Then you can um, go through there and dot your eyes and cross your t's on which program you end up going with. Yeah, that's 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 great. And then what? So you got your income documentation. You have your assets. What next? Just run, you know, basic credit report. Do an application, and because that's really the next step. Um, kind of. What I always ask my clients to do is come up with a monthly payment that their that their target monthly payment is because that's the most important. It's not we want you know we need to live in a four hundred fifty thousand dollar house or we have to buy a five hundred thousand dollar house. Come up with a monthly payment that you can afford and let the loan officer back into it to see okay would that payment be the right fit for you and then to qualify it off that because the borrowers know their income better than anybody yeah. else does. Yeah, well, sometimes. So. <laughs> yeah, or or their spend or their spending habits. Right, right? that's right, that's uh, right. Like, I like that. I like hey, it. I don't like to go out to dinner, but my friend might want to go out to dinner every night. So I love it. That's that's great advice. That's Sean Cahan, RPM Mortgage, and and just so you know, I mean, you know, we bring the guests in the studio to to make you smarter than everybody else on this Wise Wednesday. If you have any questions for them and and you didn't get their information today, just just reach out. You can go to askjjnow.com. I'll put you in touch with Shauna or Sean. And I, I want to thank you both for taking the time out of your Wednesday to, to come in today. Really appreciate it. Great information um, for our listeners today. Sean, at first time, great job. Thank you. Look forward to having you back on. Sean, great job today. Another first time on the, on the radio. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. And um, our time is up. As amazing as it is an hour, it flies right by. Thank you for taking the time out of your day, your lunch hour, to join us on Mr. Credit. Remember, any questions, ask jjnow.com. It's your lunch hour, 1700 ESPN.